Have you ever used a program that frustrates you to no end? Well, for me, that's not Pixelmator Pro. For me, that's actually Photoshop, with its dated UI and multitude of clicks to get even the simplest of tasks done, it makes me want to throw my laptop out the window. This frustration has become slightly better over time as I improved my skills. Some of it was a skill issue, but in general, I still find Photoshop a little bit more difficult to use than Pixelmator Pro. In fact, Photoshop has started adding AI to do things in a single click that would take you many clicks to do if you were hunting and pecking through the menus. Overall, I think Pixelmator's interface is a little bit simpler and cleaner and, and more intuitive to use if you don't have any graphic design experience and you're coming into a layer-based editor for the first time. I remember taking a course in college about Photoshop and the interface almost looks exactly the same. That was back when Adobe was in the creative suite phase, so it might have been CS6, and I was forced to watch the movie Helvetica, which might explain why I still gravitate to that font today. So while Adobe Photoshop has seen some awesome upgrades in recent years, and you should expect that with the high subscription price for the Adobe Creative Cloud, its UI is not one of them. To ease my frustration when I started making thumbnails in Photoshop, I started looking for alternatives. I had known about Photomator and Pixelmator from the iPhone and iPad apps, so I hopped on their website and found Pixelmator Pro. I downloaded this one-time purchase software, which is one of its main benefits, and I was a little bit underwhelmed. I thought, well, Photoshop might be difficult to use, but it's definitely a powerful program. Felt like Pixelmator Pro was just missing something. Turns out I was just missing the point with Pixelmator Pro. It felt frustrating to me because I was trying to relearn things that I had learned how to do in Photoshop in a new interface with new tools, different buttons, a little bit different naming conventions. So from that standpoint, it was a little bit frustrating, but then one day it just kind of all clicked. I figured out masks and shapes, how to draw things, how to make text, how to use their auto selection and auto mask features, and everything else that I needed to make my simple YouTube thumbnails. Around that same time, I realized that when I was done making a thumbnail, I wasn't filled with anger and regret. I actually kind of enjoyed the process, and dare I say I was happy with the results that I was getting using Pixelmator Pro. It's November 2024, and the app of the month is Pixelmator Pro. If you're new here, I'm Bill. I make videos about tech, gear, productivity, and more. So if that sounds good to you, get subscribed so you don't miss anything. It was recently announced that Apple purchased Pixelmator Pro, so the future is a little uncertain here. The skeptic in me hopes that they don't ruin it or get rid of it altogether like some of the other programs that they've purchased recently. And I really don't want any of this stuff just mashed into the Photos app to make photo editing a little bit better on the iPhone. I love that it's a standalone Mac app. I would like to see it on the iPad. So I really hope Apple takes this and rolls it into their suite of professional apps. And I would actually love if they would have something like the Creative Cloud suite where you could get Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro, Pixelmator Pro, or whatever they end up calling it sort of a layer-based editing tool, something to rival Adobe for once. So one of the main draws to Pixelmator is that it is a one-time purchase application, and it's continually gotten updates over the years. Constantly see new raw files being supported and new features being added. Some of those in the latest 3.6 release include refined masking, vector masks, you can export um, masked layers from Photoshop now, and they will show up properly in Pixelmator Pro, and updates to their AI background mask. Now, I thought the background removal tool that they had in previous versions worked well enough, actually, um, where it might just need minor refinements, and it gets a little bit better here. Realizing that you could export files from apps like Photoshop and Procreate on the iPad was a great realization for me, Occasionally I will draw on thumbnails in Procreate and then I want to finish up some minor edits in Pixelmator on the desktop. And that's great that you can just export all this stuff. All of the layers stay intact when you do that. And the interface uh, 
between all these different apps that aren't really designed to work together um, actually works pretty well. I love the object selection tool and the auto selector in Pixelmator. It's a pretty great and easy interface to use. And if you're like me and you constantly mask the opposite of what you actually want to show up, it's easy to invert the masks when you're done as well. So to get uh, you know text behind you to sort of disappear is pretty straightforward and um, the automatic you know subject selection gets the job pretty much right minus you know the normal issues with kind of like hair and sharp corners you know I'm, I'm sometimes not well defined in the background behind me and that's where it can take a little bit of manual effort to go in and clean up some of the edges of the mask and these days I'm slightly less sour on Photoshop than I was at the beginning of this video. I do think some of the AI integrations are very nice. And the more you use the program, the easier it gets. But to a beginner, it can definitely be overwhelming with the amount of menus and the amount of clicks that it takes to do stuff inside of Photoshop. Now, there are a few downsides to Pixelmator Pro, and one of them is that it's Mac only at the moment, at least with the Adobe Suite, you can get it on whatever you're using. And there is no iPad app, but it's rumored that that's in development. We'll see how that goes now that the Pixelmator team will be joining Apple. And the image processing is just okay. I find that I get much better results out of Lightroom when editing raw photos. Oftentimes I will take a raw photo for a thumbnail for the YouTube video. I will want to edit that in Lightroom first and then export a smaller version to Pixelmator to work on the thumbnail portion. I've done it the other way, and for some reason, I'm just not sold on the image processing pipeline. Whatever Pixelmator is using here, I just prefer Lightroom's method, and I'm more familiar and I get a better result editing a photo in Lightroom than I do in Pixelmator. Now, that's not to say it's missing any tools or any features. Uh, that's probably more of a user experience and familiarity thing. And lastly, sometimes things are a little bit more manual in Pixelmator than they are in Photoshop. And the perfect example is something like a glow effect. For a glow effect in Pixelmator, you have to use multiple layers and you are kind of creating the effect manually, setting the transparency and uh, messing with the parameters on each layer. Whereas in Photoshop, it's pretty much one click with the effects panel. Overall though, if you're new to graphic design and you need a simple, user-friendly, one-time purchase solution, then Pixelmator Pro might be for you. There is also a free trial of Pixelmator Pro right now on their website, so you can try it out risk-free. Don't spend any money to see if it's for you and whether or not it'll fit into your workflow. Maybe you too will go from having the anger sharks swimming in your head to a sense of calm and contentment while creating your graphics in Pixelmator Pro. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Later.